Chris and Rob, let's explain to our viewers here how different the voting process is for Best Series compared to Best Acting. Uh, the Emmy is chosen by peer group in those acting categories, so actors are choosing the winners there, and they're actually looking at one sample episode submitted by the nominee. And so these actors, of course, take their craft very seriously. So they see the one episode that Brian Cranston submits of Breaking Bad, a very low-rated show. It towers above the other nominees, and he wins. But Breaking Bad doesn't have that much of a chance to win Best Series, in my view, because it wouldn't win a popular vote. The ratings are so low. And that's where the voting process is different, I think. In series, they submit two episodes, the nominees do, times six nominees. You're asking voters who could be in any branch here, not just actors, to watch 12 episodes. I don't think they're all watching the 12. I think they're, they're just making – they're checking off their ballot – for that award, the same way somebody does at the Oscars, the Grammys, or the Golden Globes, a popular ballot. And so we have more of a popular trend coming through there. Do you agree with the premise in general of what I'm saying? I think it, I think it does wind up being a little bit more popular. And I think people on a series category may have some biases going in, shows that they already watch uh, or their friends watch or their families watch are going to – tend to get their votes even more on that as much as the episodes. I'm hoping that they do watch the episodes because they sign affidavits saying that they're watching the episodes. Um, and, and, and occasionally you do see a, a show sneak through and, and uh, surprise everybody. I remember the year Arrested Development won. Course, right. I don't think a lot of us were it was That was its first year on the air. Low-rated show, Fox comedy. I don't think a lot of us were predicting that to win no, that year. Um, but it, you know, that, that to me proves that the system works. Uh, look at the first year of Mad Men. Now, Mad Men's not all that highly rated. Uh, it had a lot of buzz within the industry. It did. Um, yeah. and so I think, I think that proves that they, but I think what happens more often than not, just guessing here, is maybe on a show that they don't, let's say somebody gets their, um, their 12 episodes in the mail, they might not go back and watch a show's episode that they already had seen during the season. But if they're going, you know, I've heard about this Breaking Bad, I'll watch those two. Or I've heard of yeah. The Good Wife, I'll make sure I watch those two. And maybe a show surprises them, and and it might get their vote as where it might not otherwise. That's right. It's more. This one is more about popularity, and I think the episode choices are also incredibly important because... That is like the, that last little obstacle that you need to clear if there's ever any doubt in the voters' mind. And I think so. I think they're both important, but it's more about buzz, season-long popularity, and so therefore it's the shows that we expect will win versus the shows that um, are really hot and and new and exciting and popular. So it's um it's it's tough. That one's a really tough one to pick all the time, every year, and and that's and the cool factor. Family. The cool Tom, it's you always cool talk about the cool factor. Field. I think that's really helped Mad Men. I think it helped the yeah. West Wing a lot, um, yeah. uh, you know, and other shows along the way. 30 Rock has that industry inside the business uh, kind of coolness yeah. to it, uh, which but, is why it can't be discounted this year, even though I don't think no, it's going it to win. Um, so well, let's, let's talk about there that. Some that, of that that's going that's on what's too. really fascinating because these are the factors that decide win and loss. Modern Family has all the buzz. It has the cool factor. It was the breakout new comedy show of the year. But if you look at this race from the selfish perfect perception of the voter, that this is the industry that they work in TV. That's what 30 Rock skewers and reminds them how crazy it is. It also has... It has snob appeal, but of course, Modern Family has, they live in a nice house, they watch iPads, they use iPad. There's a snob factor there. I think that is what helps Mad Men on the drama side. I think it certainly helped West Wing and Frasier win. The snob factor is very, yeah. very important. Sometimes it doesn't always come in like everyone loves Raymond, but I'm going off topic here. Back to 30 Rock versus Modern Family. Um, that is, it's almost impossible to get inside the voters' minds here, but it's won the That's last right. few years in a row. And they love repeats. They, they do, do, but I think that's going to hurt 30 Rock this year. Uh, if this was the second year of 30 Rock, let's say, and it had only won the one time, 
uh, and it had a really good season. I think maybe it could even beat the buzz and coolness and newness of Modern Family. But I think Modern Family comes along at just the perfect moment where 30 Rocks won three in a row already, and people know that. It had a season that I think even they would admit privately was not of their best season. They, they submitted six great episodes, don't get me wrong, but the season as a whole was very rock, rock, uh, roller coaster up and down. Some weeks were great, some weeks were awful, some, a lot of weeks were just average. Uh, and then Modern Family comes along, fresh, new, hip, um, has some uh, Emmy winners behind the scenes so they know what they're doing, uh, has some familiar faces on screen. Um, I just can't imagine a situation where the timing is so perfect for Modern Family that it wouldn't win over 30 Rock this year. Yeah, and uh, um, on the drama side, Tom and Chris, I have a theory about drum, drama series this year, and if we look at the, the shows nominated, and I remember last time when, when we talked about this, when the nomination has, nominations had just come out or they were about to come out, um, and I was saying how The Good Wife shouldn't be nominated and how could it possibly be considered. And, Tom, you mentioned that it's very popular in the industry and people love it, it's, and, I, and I noticed that it had good ratings. So I decided to, um, to, to, to watch the whole show. I had it all on my, on my TiVo, um, and I, I decided to watch it over a week. And, wow, I was completely blown away. I thought, wow, this show is really exceptional. It's not just a procedural. It's smart. It's interesting. Um, it's even funny. It's got great characters. It had everything that you need to have to win an Emmy. And I thought, well, you know what? It's actually got a shot here because um, even though Mad Men is the cool basic cable, you know, it's got everything behind. It's like a, it's like a work of art. It's beautifully made, beautifully written. It's smart and intelligent. You've got The Good Wife as well, which is a, a more traditional type show, which a lot of voters are going to love. That's the kind of show they probably work in. Um, it's more representative of the broadcast model of uh, a TV drama series. And I just looked back um, through the years and, you know, remembered the times where shows like The Practice would be, you know, a show like The Sopranos. You know, it's happened before, and I think it might, it might happen again. You know? And people will be shocked about this, and people might think that I'm completely off base here, but... If we um, just forget about the biases for a second and look at the actual episodes, The Good Wife is a beautifully made show, and, uh, and it's definitely up there, along with a show like Dexter, which had its best season too. So drama series is not completely in the bag for Mad Men, even though there's nothing like Mad Men on TV. And but Mad really Men is so it's, slow. It's I like, like Mad Men. Come on. But even the, 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 the big uh, season opener this time, I kept going, come on, move this story along, move it along yeah. already. Come on, come on, come on. And I do admire the show. It's, it's, it's wonderful. But it's so slow, Here people could have, could have gotten a little tired of it, too. You know, we ran at Gold Derby two polls recently. If we really do size up these races for best drama and comedy series based on a popular vote, I figured, well, let's see what the results of actual outright polls among the award nuts who read our website would think. And uh, Mad Men won the first poll and Lost won the second poll. Now, uh, it's very possible that, and I think all three of us agree, that those are probably the two front runners to win. But I think that the points that you're making, Rob, are valid about The Good Wife. It, it is, uh, it's a sleeper here. And also, by the way, there's a little-known fact that we have to pay careful attention to when we look at the Emmys, and that is who... Who pays for the voters? When you are a member of the TV Academy and you work for the broadcast channels, they pay for their employees. Showtime doesn't pay for their employees. HBO doesn't pay for their employees. So if uh, there is, there used to be this broadcast bias among voters, it was because NBC buys a big block of memberships for their for their people. There is a built-in broadcast bias at the Emmys, which we haven't seen lately, though, because all the cool cable stuff's been winning, probably because of the other factor, the snob factor. And Dexter, Dexter would win hands down if they hadn't made the big yeah. strategic blunder of airing that uh, last season, the most brilliant uh, show on and, and finale, I think, in recent TV history, uh, in December. That was lunacy. If they ran that in May, they would still have the buzz and the cool factor going for them. But uh, the only thing I wish Dexter had done, I mean, they, they can't help where their season falls. I guess it aired yes, they can. What, September to September to December. Well, I mean, they didn't know that Mad they Man had is, many, is every, airing theirs right now because they, they're they doing it strategically for Emmys. When you're a cable network, you can run it whenever you want. And, and the, I, I guess what I'm saying is last season aired when it did. I think they would have been really smart to consider running the new season that they've already shot. Yeah. 
Right, okay. Right now, that, like Mad right. Men is doing. Yeah. Right when the I voters the are... The city used to do. Yeah. Are, uh, what uh, several of these have done uh, that, that have won and, and, and had success with, maybe Dexter, this one time, should have considered coming back, say, in July or early August, uh, rather than you know mid, mid-September like they're planning on doing. Um, I do think they've been out there. I've, I've been impressed with their campaigning. I've been impressed with the fact that they... Yeah. Um, uh, have done some good things here during the summer to remind people of what a great season they had last year. Um, I think uh, even something simple like having a, a TV critics panel, you know, for a for a show going into a later season, uh, they did a TV critics panel last week, which gets all the TV critics excited about the the upcoming season, even though it's several weeks away. So Dexter's got a, a very decent yeah, shot at winning this small. award. I yeah. hope so. They also went to Comic-Con, by the way. Of course, we should mention that Dexter yeah. did, which was smart for the cool crowd. But I think that they just, you know, a, a lot of it has to do with what you see when you get in a car and you drive down Sunset Boulevard, as all these Emmy voters do, and or just any of the main thoroughfares of Hollywood, and you see the madman signs everywhere. Uh, these are factors that you know, people who are not in Hollywood don't see, but they really matter a lot. And Dexter's not on that radar now because they're not out there with new episodes. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if if the timing factor helps helps uh, Mad Men here. But of course, let's talk about Lost because Lost has the broadcast bias going for it. it it's an ABC broadcast show. It it did not have its best season ever, but it certainly rallied at the end with that finale that. In general, most people liked it. Was, they, they weren't screaming and crucifying it like the Sopranos. And in the last poll that we ran at Gold Derby, it handily beat Mad Men in terms of poll results. So it, we, we all agree it could actually win, right? Oh, I do. I, one thing I look at when I'm making those kind of predictions for series is what were, what were my expectations on nominations going in? Does it, does it uh, go, do better um, giving an indication that that people liked it even better than I thought they would. And, and in, in the case of Lost, Matthew Fox gets a first-time nomination. Yeah. Elizabeth Mitchell gets a nomination. The finale gets both writing and directing. Uh, Good Wife that we mentioned got way more nominations than any of us were even expecting, especially in acting categories. Uh, but back to Lost for a second. I do wonder if, I mean, isn't The Sopranos the only drama ever to win in its final season? So... It's very difficult to win your final season, that drama series award. Yeah. I think it's more about the the voters don't really care that it was its final season. All they care about is what show did they love the most. And Lost is a little divisive because it did start off a little slow and some of the episodes weren't as strong as it, it, it could have been. It had a great finale in my opinion, but it still wasn't... Um, completely adored by everybody and was very divisive, and I just can't see it being um, a front runner. If it wins, it wins because it has the support and people want to send it off. But otherwise, I really honestly do believe, and I'm going to stand by this to the very last second, that this is a race between Mad Men and Good Wife, and everybody else should be happy to be nominated. Dexter is a slight dark horse, but it's really between Good Wife and Mad Men. It's like the two models of TV battling it out for supremacy. That's how I see it. Well, all right, let well, me I think it's those two plus plus, plus lost. Lost. I agree. So I think we have a four way race Dexter. here. A four yes, way race. With Dexter, with Dexter, I agree. And and all of a sudden, if we all at least buy into that general in concept in general, even though Rob is only accepting three quarters of that premise, I, what this <laughs> what this means is that you don't need that, that this vote is 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 broken. Uh, you know, in so many different ways that that you may not need a lot of votes to win this. That's right. That's true. The vote is split all these ways, yeah. Generally, yeah, what right. I see, though, and I, I use this for Oscars as well, if you've got a, a, a perceived front runner, which Mad Men is the front runner, I think, in everybody's minds, right. it's yeah. usually best to knock off the front runner if you've got something, one candidate that's going to overtake it. Like when uh, Brokeback Mountain lost to Crash. The only yeah. reason Crash won, I think, is because it was the only viable alternative if you didn't like Brokeback Mountain. Here, in the case of Mad Men, I do wonder if those other three shows, and give a few votes to Breaking Bad and maybe a vote to True, True Blood, um, might might kind of cancel each other out, the three shows behind Mad Men, and allow Mad Men to, to move right on forward. That's also why, going back to comedy for a second, that it makes it even easier to make the modern family prediction, 
because I think it is the one alternative to 30 Rock if you're sick of it winning.